I'm Elizabeth Moss, and this is how I became Shirley Jackson. The script came to me, so it wasn't my idea to, to uh, do the film um, or, or tell the story. And I'm jealous. I wish it was. It would have been a great idea I would have had. Uh, but it came to me as a screenplay, and it was a brilliant screenplay that was an adaptation of the book. And um, I didn't know anything about Shirley Jackson. I'd read the lottery, but I, I had no idea about her personal life. Um, so my first introduction to her was through that, through that script. What happens to all lost girls? They go mad. So I started with her, her stories because and, and novels because I felt like that, you know, where where do you begin but there? Uh, so I started with that and then I continued to sort of read as we went along through the through the process um, of making the film, even on set. But uh, I started there. There's a lot of biographical material out there. There's a great book um, by Ruth Franklin that's a great biography and there's a lot of you know, you can sift through the internet and find, you know, go down some, some holes and find a lot there. Um, and then I, I had access to a recording of her reading the lottery. And that's where uh, me and my dialect coach, Coley, developed the accent and her voice. Her voice is quite a bit lower than mine and much more rich. And, and her accent is much more lovelier frankly um, so that's where we developed her voice um, and then there were these letters between Shirley and Stanley that I really um, that, that we got that Michael and I read and uh, those were probably the most illuminating because they really showed their sense of humor their intelligence and also their love for each other um, they had an unusual relationship that was somewhat toxic at times but that they really did love each other and they respected each other and they respected each other's work. And so um, those were hugely influential. I feel like we're in the Scottish play, on the verge of madness. What will happen? We started with was the costume and the I had the padding. He was wearing padding underneath my, my costume to make me look a little bit more like Shirley. And um, that led to a certain physicality immediately. Uh, and then... I felt like she had an, um, an interesting relationship with her body from what I had read. I felt, I felt like she was a bit self-conscious about her body, but at the same time kind of not paying any attention to it in a way, unselfconscious and self-conscious at the same time. Um, then two things. One, I had herniated a disc in my neck um, about two weeks before we started shooting. And I was in extreme pain <laughs> for a lot of the shooting of this movie. And I honestly think that it, 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 it led to her physicality in a good way because I feel like she was in pain physically a lot of the time. She took a lot of pills. And I felt like that actually really helped me because I was so uncomfortable. And, and, and my most comfortable position was sort of this stiff position. And I didn't want to, I could barely use, I didn't, my left arm, my left arm had lost a lot of strength. And so that lent itself. And then, and then her, her lumbering thing, her, the way that she like walked, I don't know where that came from. I just, it, it is no necessary, it's not necessarily accurate to Shirley Jackson at all. Um, and uh, I, I want to res be respectful of that. Um, it just kind of happened and it just it seemed natural and it seemed right and I so I just kind of went with it and I don't it kind of I don't know where it came from it's odd it made me feel thrillingly horrible do you know what it's like to have a secret it was the first time I'd ever played a historical figure or somebody that was well known like that and I think um, I'm so glad that I was able to try the try it for the first time with a little bit of freedom and a little bit of um, being able to take liberties uh, because it, it was definitely not quite as scary. Um, at one point, you know, we did all our research and all our work and we really tried our best to learn everything we could about them, about Shirley and Stanley. And then at a certain point, Michael and I just agreed that we had to kind of let it go. And we had to take everything we had learned and kind of throw it away and try to, um, try to capture the essence of them and what we loved about them but also do our own interpretations of them for this particular story so that we weren't crippled by 
by the responsibility, you know. I'm counting down from three. Three, two, one.